Good morning and welcome inside the locker room. It is Friday. It is time to get this Friday edition of the locker room on the way. Chega, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, <laughs> it's been an interesting week, um, especially in the world of sports. But uh, we are getting to the crunch part. All right. On today's show, what are we touching on? Uh, Nigeria in Accra. Um, how the team Nigeria is performing so far. Um, we'll also touch a little bit on what happened at the Indian Wells because one minute we're playing tennis, the next minute we're fighting bees. Uh, we'll touch on that just a little bit. And then we'll talk about Bayer Leverkusen. The unbeaten run continues. Uh, before we'll touch a little bit on the FA Cup, you know, we have that little business of Manchester United versus Liverpool. Um, and then we'll talk about the UEFA Champions League draws. All right. So that's what we have on the show this morning. But before we do all that talking, um, Omashaya, tell us, how can we be a part of the locker room this morning? To be part of the conversation with uh, in the locker room and Chega here with us this morning will be for you to send us a WhatsApp message on 0809-444-0981 will be where we read all the WhatsApp messages you send across. Then also you raise down to youtube.com forward slash smooth 91 FM Lagos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There you can find uh, the past edition of the locker room and all other segments, but then you can be part of it as it's ongoing right now. Give us a like, leave your comments there. We're sure to read all of it. Uh, Tega, it's done already. Where do we go from here? Headlines. <laughs> we go okay. to the headlines. On the bill this morning, Nigeria wins five MMA gold medals at African Games, as there would be Indian Wells. Yannick Sina extends winning run at B Swam Hulk's Carlos Alcaraz match. Then there is a WSL manager say player coach relationships in women's football are unacceptable. But then there would be Europe's heavyweights away Champions League quarterfinal fate as there would be late cheek double extends Leverkusen's unbeaten run. There would also be Inter Scudetto charge continues against Napoli after Champions League pain. Of course, there would be defender corner. Bradley says Liverpool wants to win every trophy possible for departing boss Jurgen Klopp after the trash Sparta Prague to reach the Europa League quarterfinals. Then, England squad Ben White didn't want to be considered, says Gareth Southgate. Well, these are all of it. We expect to get across to you this morning as we reach out to Tega. Remember to send a message across to 0809-444-0981. Tega, it's over to you. You're muted. Masha, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering what happened. Um, so, yes, we, we start, let's start with uh, Nigeria at the Africa Games. And, man, they give us MMA to fight. This would not even fear God. But let's read that story. <laughs> The landmark African Games Mixed Martial Arts MMA Tournament has already concluded in Ghana with finals and medal ceremonies on the continent's Olympic platform. Nigeria's team represented in the finals were uh, Benin. National teams represented were Benin, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Egypt, Ghana, Libya, Mauritius, Nigeria, Sudan, Togo, and Uganda. And Nigeria came out tops. Um, there was even this particular fight I saw of the MMA um, Nigeria uh, Ghana in the final MMA she beat this girl like she had her in mind she beat this girl like she was Nigerian Jolof trying to beat Ghanaian Jolof it was it was a, <laughs> it was a fight yeah. of venomous proportions but um but yes uh, so there are other sports in Nigeria uh, but the, the thing is you know how it is we are largely a footballing nature, nation. That's where all the focus is. That's where most of the money goes to. Um, and I'm hoping that from this Africa Games, we can diversify, you know, even brand interest and all that. From It has to start from the sports ministry and especially with the sports minister. But when you look at um, what Nigeria is doing in other sports, there's so much potential there. There's so much talent there. Um, all it needs is a little investment. Um, unfortunately for Nigeria, I knew that as soon as we started talking other sports, 
that South Africa may just sneak in above us on the medal table, and they have. Nigeria is now down to third from second, and South Africa are in second. Of course, you know why? Swimming has started. <laughs> and so South Africa is a multiple sport nation. Uh, so they are there in cricket, they are there in rugby, uh, they are there in um, aquatics, so every kind of swimming that you know on the world stage, not just on African level, on the world stage. So by the time we say getting into multiple sports, he just knew that South Africa somehow was going to get above Nigeria. So yes, they have. They've pushed us down to third on the table, but I would still say Nigeria doing so brilliantly um, coming out there and winning medals after medals, and especially a lot more gold. So uh, congratulations to Team Nigeria. Hopefully, uh, once athletics starts, um, we'll be able to make up for some of the medals that we've dropped in other sports. So moving once on to... Start, start, sorry. All right. But then uh, this justifies the large contingent we talked about way before the game started, right? So oh, okay. yes. Um, yeah, we, we, we would have... Large, if, if we had developed our sports and based on the potential we have in the country, we should be carrying U.S. kind of contingents to the Olympics. Yes, we should be, because we have that talent. I, where you, the Olympics are in August this year. Just watch the Olympics and see the names of Nigerian descent running for other countries. That's how large our contingent should be. Okay. Now, let's see what's going on in the, at the Indian World's Open uh, tournament This uh, as we go on now. Australian Open champion Yannick Sina extended his winning round to 19 matches by beating Jiril Lechka to reach the Indian World's semifinals before a swarm of bees, bees stopped play. My brother. So let's talk about Yannick Sina first before we get to the swarm of bees. Um, mm. Yannick Sina, again, I told you he has he's on an unbeaten run from the start of this year, 2024. He has not yet lost a match um, this year. So that one is a, a really tough task for anybody that is facing him. And he's facing mm. Carlos Alcaraz next. That's what everybody wants to see. Unfortunately, it's a semi-final match as opposed to a final match. So it's a very, very tough one. Um, and very interesting for the neutrals that are going to watch it. But Carlos Alcaraz later in the evening faced uh, Sasha Zverev to determine who was going to face Yannick Sina. And after one game on each side, I think they're just about to start the third game in the match. Bees came out of nowhere. And I think one actually stung Carlos Alcaraz, which is why he started to run. Because at first he was just trying to swat the bees away. Mm. Um, and then it, it felt like one stung him. That's how this boy took off down the... Um, down the uh, corridor, no, no. down the tunnel. Yeah. And he did not wait for the umpire. He did not wait. Ooh. He didn't even tell his opponents that there's fire on the mountain. He just took off. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's so bad. Um, so he went down the tunnel um, and then a bee stung the umpire. Um, uh -huh. And uh, he, by then the umpire had already indicated to uh, Sasha Zverev that he should go down the tunnel. And it took a long time. They were everywhere. They were all over the cameras. The boys left their bags. On court, Specta it doesn't happen. Spectators left. Um, the, it was the the thing was some spectators around certain areas, around certain oh. VIP areas, because you know the the close court people. Um, that's what that's those are the people that are affected. They also left and went into the tunnel, but the the bees were mostly um residing on the court itself. I think their queen was there or something. Mm. If you saw the hundreds of bees around the, the camera that they were using, it was it was a bee invasion. So it ha the match had to stop for a while. But I think that helped because when Carlos Alcaraz came out at first, he came out with the sense of um I've lost back to back matches to uh such as very in recent time, the last time at the ATP final, excuse me. <clears throat> and the next time uh, in, in the Australian Open. So he, he was playing a little bit like he was cautious. But after the bee stung him and he came out um, of that bee break, he was ruthless. He ended up defeating uh, Sasha Zverev 6-3, 6-1. I think he became bee man after the <laughs> after that bee stung that, him and he took out Sasha Zverev. The, the vaccination he got. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Yes, uh, so a uh, great one for him on that side. On the women's end, Coco Golf still struggling 
um, with her former, still struggling with her game, but she's managing to get the job done. Yesterday, she had 17 double faults when she was trying to serve, but she still ended up winning the match in straight sets. Uh, she faces Maria Sakari next, who has battled her way, um, especially past Emma Navarro, uh, to get to the semi final. So it is Iga Shiontek, um taking on Mata Kostchuk in the semi finals of the women's um, Indian Wells, and then Coco Golf taking on Maria Sakari. So both on the men's side and the women's side, blockbuster. Navarro was the giant killer, wasn't she the one who kicked out yes, Sabalenka? She was one that, yes, she was the one that took out Sabalenka. <laughs> well, let's drift on now to win women issues still more here as we find um, Aston Villa manager, Villa manager Carla Ward says, players and coaches being in relationships is crossing that line and it's unacceptable. Where do we draw the line? So this is... This is a huge deal. This is a huge deal in women's sports. And unfortunately, you cannot say men should stay out of women's sports um, because women's sports is business. And business is not gender-based. Now, there's some things you have to push for equality. You have, we have to push for equality um, when it comes to leadership, when it comes to sports management, um, you know, when it comes to investment in women's sports. But you can't say that you're going to completely read an entire sport of, of a, a whole gender. What do you mean? This is business. Investors can come from any place. Coaches can come from any place. The only time um, you have to make sure it's 100% gender-based is in participation as a player. And so in women's sports, we've always had this thing from ice skating um, to, to tennis, where players date their coach coaches to football. And the... It, 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 people were only raising eyebrows at first when it was a lot of coaches taking advantage of underage girls, like we saw in ice skating, where we eventually sent a coach um, to prison for rape because those girls were all under the age of 16 and he was doing crazy things with them. Um, but even in football, it, 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 is, it is not a rule that you shouldn't date. It's just like the office rule where they say... Um, People, some offices say people cannot marry in, in your office and, and stay in the office. So you notice that people start dating and then when they know they're getting serious, one person finds another job and the other person finds another job. And the reason they talk about this player-coach thing is the imbalance in power. It's almost like a teacher-student relationship. It's, <laughs> it, 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 so there, there is a... There, it's not even a subconscious bias. There is an unconscious bias that will happen with between a teacher-student relationship, even if the student may be of legal age. There's the tendency to let the person get away with things. And so it happens in, in football. There's a line that that's the one line you shouldn't cross. The minute you start thinking that you're starting to catch feelings for your player, I think it's the honorable thing to do is to resign. So the Leicester, in Leicester City, the women's team, there is a player allegedly dating the coach. Which means that she gets priority in selection. Even if she may not be able to play. That's the unconscious bias we're talking about. Which means that sometimes they may not even be disciplined on the team because if her, if her teammates know that she's dating her coach, then that it just takes away authority, discipline, responsibility mm -hmm. from doing. Because now they're like, yeah, look, you are dating my mates. We are all mates together here. So it is a slippery slope. And it is yeah. one that, yes, it is. It's a slippery slope. And it's one that has been categorically stated cannot happen. In tennis, women's tennis, it still happens. There's conversations going on about it. But there's little you can do because tennis is, an, I mean, for the large part, an individual sport. So even when they start dating, you may not know. Hmm. Um, uh, uh, so uh, it, 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 they're still finding a way to deal with that in women's tennis. But hmm. on the football, when it comes to football, they, it, it's an unwritten rule. You cannot date your player. It's that simple. Um, and so this man is dating his player and it has come out. Now, he's, the FA, according to the FA, he's allegedly cooperating with them on what the relationship is. There's no talk of adultery yet. So if he had a wife and he was dating his player, that one was categorically, he's gone. Um, but what it is is that he's a single man, or allegedly, um, 
dating is his player and it is well you just can't do that uh, so a lot of people who have heard about it and they're talking about it i wait to see what will pass you can't make a law though um that men's coach shouldn't be in the women's game that's just wrong uh but you can you can make some slippery rules that some definite rules that you know people don't take advantage of it's 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 strange that we are talking about this in 2024 but it's a real thing truly a slippery slope that um very uh, slippery <laughs> It is still the locker room on Smooth 98.1 FM. We expect to get your thoughts across on 0809-444-0981. Go over to YouTube, leave a message there, um, youtube.com forward slash Smooth 98.1 FM Lagos. Uh, I see uh, a message earlier on asking if uh, what's the position if South Africa had overtaken, but it's been taken off. Now, LK Adoba was asking, but that's, he has seen it probably uh, uh, yes, was falling that's, that's, yes. ahead. So yes. he took it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> South but Africa will be taking us. There'll yeah. be more. There'll be more on the other side after that. <laughs> oh, Masha, what's happening? This thing keeps signing me out and signing me back in. Oh, Masha, oh. Oh, Masha. Yeah, I'm listening. Yes, you're. I can hear you. This thing keeps sign. It, it keeps signing me out and signing me back in. By I'm not even talking. I, I think is the network is still not stable, but I think it, that's just okay. The network. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see how it goes. Then. It's been smooth so far. Yes. So when we come, you would like to get a few messages and then we we'll go on. No, when I come back, we'll not take any messages yet okay. till we take the Champions League story. After we take right. the Champions Let's... League story, we we'll take messages. Okay, all right, that works. Your moments in South Africa, this is the holiday. Explore new holiday views at SouthAfrica.net. Come on a journey with us. My name is Kevin Price. I'm here with Alex. We are here. And this is the Great Trust. It is our former car. It is still the locker room on smooth 98.1 FM. Tiger still here. So, Tiger, let's pick up the pace as we get on to some more issues around uh, Europe. Uh, this yes, Friday's sir. champion. You were saying? No, no, let, I said let's do that. Let's do that. All right. Uh, this Friday's Champions League quarterfinals draw is set to throw up a series of heavyweight ties after a midweek in which penalty shootout drama really brought. Europe's elite club competition to life. So um, this week's draws is going to be bloody. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think everybody's talking about, you know, the weakest team being 
Dortmund and a lot of people are saying Manchester City will get them because Manchester City tends to get the easy draws until they get to maybe the semi-finals or the quarter-finals where most in general there are no easy draws and it's, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Um, Arsenal had to go to a penalty shootout to qualify and then just when we, we thought it was over, Atletico Madrid uh, went to penalty shootout with um, Inter Milan to get to the um, quarterfinals. In fact, I, I think I saw Lautaro Martinez ball um, somewhere here. He fell on top of my car. Um, so the ball from his penalty that he took. <laughs> All I'm that was his that penalty... out there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a horrible penalty. Oh, he slipped when he was about to shoot. Oh, God. Why was he sleeping? The ball is in one spot. Um, anyways, it was a horrible penalty shootout by Inter Milan. Um, they got knocked out of the Champions League and Atletico Madrid are through. Uh, but now all the top, a lot of top teams are through. So it's Manchester City, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Arsenal, um, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. Um, coming through in the quarterfinals, and so I want to feel the pulse of those that are listening. What do you think would be your most likely draws? A lot of people are saying that Arsenal will draw Barcelona. That would be a cheap one because Barcelona are not in a great form. Um, so maybe this would be the time to emancipate them from mental slavery. But mm. what if Arsenal draws Real Madrid? Hmm. All right. Oh, so on that note, um, I want you to send your predictions of the draws, of the tough draws you think will happen. Um, the numbers you should send those messages to are Zero eight zero nine four 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 zero nine eight one zero eight zero nine four 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 zero nine eight one predictions of the UEFA. Uh, yeah, uh, so let, let's just predict before the draws actually happen. What do you think would be your toughest draws? What draws do you even want to see? All right, so send those messages in, um, and we'll be taking those messages. While we wait on those messages, can we read the messages that come in um, just before the break? Okay, I see Tyre's message here, and Tyre says the bees were sent by somebody's uh, uh, village people when it was losing uh, the power of nature. Physical power, moral behavior is difficult to regulate, moral hazard and red flags. Well, that's relating to the women's league issue, right? And that's what Tyre yes, is talking about. Yes, the Leicester City coach and the Leicester City player, yeah. When emotions and slippery slopes get in the way, something can regulate in the way. But anyway, moving on. Ivoku's message waits for us here from K2 says, Niger is strong in athletics, uh, weightlifting, contact, uh, well, sports and basketball. Uh, the sports ministry should develop those as well. Tega, how can a man's house be on fire and you want him to warn his neighbor? Akira's was stung into action <laughs> to be. I'm telling you, <laughs> he, the way he took off. Oh my goodness! You know, usually they are very polite in tennis. They raise uh, their rackets just to indicate. This boy did not even. He just went down the tunnel. <laughs> safety first. <laughs> there is an obvious conflict uh, of interest where the coach dates a player. If they fall out, it can affect their relationship and affect the team. Ibukun's thought also on that matter. Then, yeah. AY, mm -hmm. AY from Muniru has this uh, relating to the predictions you're asking for what he hopes to see. Real Madrid will draw Bayern Munich, and then Manchester City will draw PSG. Atletico Madrid will draw Arsenal, and uh, Barcelona will draw Dortmund. That's um, AY from Muniru's prediction. Then, uh, uh, that looks like a nice one. That looks like a nice yeah. one. Uh, let's see. Tyre's uh, prediction is that uh, well, Bayern and, As and Barcelona will meet uh, to meet in the next round. Thomas Miller as uh, to be happy, and I want to see something. Liverpool scoreline looked like they were playing a penalty shootout. Well, <laughs> I see Get more predictions story. coming in. Okay, right, we'll take the predictions after. Let's 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 go to the Europa story. So we'll take the predictions. After. Now, this next one is uh, Patrick Chicks scored two goals in stoppage time to rescue Bayern Leverkusen on beaten run and their dreams of a remarkable treble in a three goals to two. That's 5-4 aggregate home uh, win over Karabag in their Europa League last 16 second leg on Thursday. 
Yeah, that that was the match. I would say this for, for Bayer Leverkusen. Like I said, there's a monkey on their back because they haven't yet lost. And so sometimes they play a little um, conservative. Because yesterday they were playing at home. They dominated possession. Um, they even, at some point in time, they even had a man up when Karabakh scored their second goal. But they were not making any inroads into Karabakh's um, defence. They were not really testing the Karabakh goalkeeper. And then they went two goals down. Just like they went two goals down in the first leg. And from nowhere, I think it was that going two goals down that gingered them. Because all of a sudden, Frimpong, who had been flattering to deceive and running up and down the place like a headless chicken, found a way um, to be more direct and more accurate and put the ball in the back of the net. And just whilst the team kept pressing and pushing and they had numerical advantage, then Sheik calls the equalizer. And so everybody's now waiting for extra time to see how this will go. Sheik said, no, we are not having extra time today. We finish it now. And <laughs> he went in there with his second header. And I, I think he scored that second header in the 97th minute. Um, meanwhile, they, they had added only six minutes of um, injury time. So it, it, was a, it was a fantastic match. But Bayer Leverkusen still keeps their unbeaten run and they're through. Um, Brighton against Roma, remember the first leg they had lost by four goals to nil. Um, this leg, they eventually won it, but they could only score one goal. So yes, despite the fact that they won the match, they lost the war. And, and so Roma are through. AC Milan was already through um, from the first line, first um, match score leg. Um, and then they now went to the second match score line and com completely decimated Slava Pra. So um, done. And then Liverpool, my goodness, there was no mercy. There was no kindness. There was no spirit of sportsmanship. Those guys just went to destroy, <laughs> went on <laughs> to destroy that team. I think they're they are not beating them for, for their sake. I think they're beating them to warn Manchester United that come Sunday, this could be you. Um, and so just to touch on the next, we're supposed to take another yeah. story for yeah. Liverpool. So let me just wrap up that story here. So, so FA, so now Manchester United face Liverpool in the FA Cup and Liverpool as players are saying, we're going to win as many trophies as we, as possible um, for you, you're going club's farewell. And so Manchester United, you are the next target that they have. Um, I don't know how Manchester United is going to square up against Liverpool. Uh, maybe they set a low block and try to defend and then hit Liverpool on the counter. But the way that Liverpool is, they have people that can score from long reach. They have people that can score from inside the 18-yard box. They have players that can pull apart um, defences. So I, I don't know that they can defend for 90 minutes and come away with a good result. But this is football and this is the FA Cup. Anything can literally happen. Let's touch on the Scudetto race. Um, Inter Milan returned to the Serie A's um, title match with a visit to Napoli on Sunday night as both teams lick their wounds after painful elimination from the Champions League. Yeah, um, Napoli knocked out by Barcelona and um, Inter Milan knocked out by Atletico Madrid. They must really hate Spanish teams in Italian Syria. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's a tough one. But yeah. Inter Milan, I think, can console themselves with the fact that, you know, they are 16 points clear at the top of the Scudetto race. Um, but they need a win to feel good about their week because that was a heartbreaking loss. Um, mm -hmm. So they need a win to feel good uh, about their week. And so Napoli is next up. Napoli, on the other hand, seemed to have been on the rise before the loss to, to Barcelona. So they'd want to return to winning ways. What that means is, um, for the new trials watching, this is going to be a fiery, feisty one uh, for you to enjoy. Uh, like, just touch on John White for us and see what in has uh, Gary Salgate is saying, the man. All right. So, uh, you know, the international break is coming. And Ben White actually, Ben White of Arsenal actually ruled himself out of being called up. He's like, coach, don't call me. I'm not coming. Um, now, it's interesting. Some people are saying, yeah, why he's right. Why should he go? Um, after all, Gareth Salgate has the people he plays. And Ben White is barely one of those people. So it doesn't make any sense to go to camp when you will not be chosen. But I, I, again, I, I question this thing where players can decide that they don't want to start going for international games. Don't call me. I'm not coming for international games. Um, where do you draw that line? What if you have something that you have to qualify for and you, you know, you have already ruled yourself completely out um, of the inter international duties and the coach has not much options left. So 
I'm I'm very skeptical about players withdrawing, you know, their availability for for their national team duties. Um, but hey, it's England. They have an abundance of talent. So Gareth Southgate has an abundance of options. They'll be fine. So that's uh, where we'll wrap up. Uh, let's go over, get, get the messages in, and then we'll just um, get to lock up the locker room this morning. But let's see, from starting from YouTube, I've got um, Metro Central who's asking, when would Tega be around that usual sport, the corner in the studio sometime, anytime soon? Just asking, it's been a while. Then it goes on to say, the quarterfinals would be a cracker. I am rooting for Manchester City to be drawn with PSG. That would be the cracker. And then Abiodu Obisheson says, uh, Chaga, it's going to be Bayern versus Arsenal again. Barca versus Man City. And then Ogundikwe Ulua Shegun says, good morning, guys. Well, Man City versus Real Madrid, Atletico versus Arsenal, Dortmund versus Barca, and Bayern versus PSG. Those are the messages on YouTube. And then I go over now to uh, the WhatsApp platform to pick up Ayo from Festa. What's the message all about? It says, as the Barcelona fan, I really wouldn't mind a draw against Arsenal. That would be easy for us. Ateta is just ah. doing. <laughs> it's a, Ateta is just doing industrial attachment in London. Barca is his destination. I am from Festac. <laughs> and then with this one comes, uh, it comes in. It says, "Believe me, Arsenal won't. Arsenal versus Atletico Madrid." then Arsenal will pick up the Champions League trophy. Ta Leo Taiwo from Alaba or Joe. And then... Oh, Emeka God, Wenu I say I will marry an Arsenal fan. They are very hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> then Emeka Onelum from, uh, from Amu says, as an Arsenal fan, they should give us Bayern Munich. That ten goes to two aggregate in 2017. I still have not forgotten. We want our revenge so badly. Looking at the la latest England call-up list, Hikayo Tomori has been ignored again. Even a half-legged Ari Maguire will get a call-up before him. Now, Super Eagles must be looking attractive to him right now. Tega, no space. We don't have space. We are complete. We are complete in our camp. We don't have space. All right. On that note, thank you so much um, for joining us on the locker room. Thank you for sending your messages on YouTube and on our WhatsApp platforms. Thank you for tuning in um, to Smooth 98.1 FM and to our YouTube channel to like come your way again next week. Hopefully, the Lord mm. of the Banter would have done his work over the weekend and we'll mm. have something to banter about. Have a great weekend and aspire to Maguire. Right.